wife Jenny is uh, in uh, Oneonta, New York with our granddaughter and her parents. And uh, the good news is Amelia has been taking some steps. I got a video of her uh, walking a little bit. And uh, so she's having a good time there. Uh, so I begin my second week as a bachelor, you know. And um, I, I don't know what it is. I, I don't know if it's because she's gone. I just sort of don't plan things as well as when she's around. I'm not sure, but um, I was really excited about yesterday seeing some basketball. I was going to head to the Huntington North um, semi-state to see Westview play. They played in, in the evening game, and then earlier Blackhawk Christian was playing Southwood, and they all set to go, and I got there to Huntington and found a place to park, and I walked up to the gym and sold out. Can you believe that? Sold out. So I drove another hour and a half back and listened to it on the radio, okay? Instead, so I had no idea, 5,500 seats, so good for those kids. Glad, I hope they had a great time. If you'll turn to your bulletins, there's a sermon outline we'll be looking at, and during the message, um, we'll be uh, taking a look at, looking at that, uh, some of those scriptures, uh, verses together. I want to read to you, our, our scripture reading is found in Luke chapter 19, verses 1 to 9. Luke 19, verses 1 to 9. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. As you travel south into downtown Waveland in the 1970s, you have to go up a fairly sizable hill on State Road 59. As a kid, that hill was a challenge to be conquered on a bicycle. Now, going down the hill was great. You could really pick up some speed, fly past the elevator, and take the left take a turn left towards State Road 47. The real fun was riding the bike back up the hill. It was just steep enough to pose a challenge. I would get my banana seat bike. Remember those? Banana seat bike rocking side by side. I'd be standing up, pumping those pedals. The closer I get to the goal, the harder it was to keep the bike moving forward. I remember one time the chain broke on my bicycle. It was devastating to my body and my journey. I had to get off the bike and suffer the embarrassment of walking it up the hill. As you approached the crest of the hill, you could see Rubydale sundries, and, and you knew the end was in sight. But you couldn't let up. If you didn't keep up your pace, the bike would stand still, and, and you could lose your balance. You had to keep pushing those pedals. Every inch you traveled, got to be more difficult. Now, when you went downhill, you didn't need to stand up and pump those pedals. Gravity was all the momentum you needed to keep going. The real reward, though, was when you went uphill because when you finally came up over the hill, you had this great sense of relief, fulfillment, and accomplishment. I'd raise up my hand like I won the Olympics, you know? Made it up the hill. In our scripture for today, I think Zacchaeus knew what this was like. He had heard the stories about Jesus. He wanted to see him pass by, so he found his way through the crowds. Last week, we began this series of messages called by God. God calls us in various ways, and especially when we make a sincere effort to know God, just like Zacchaeus did. We pick up the story in verse 1. It says this, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He he wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, 
he could not see over the crowd, so he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. Zacchaeus was hated by everyone in the city. He may have been the most hated man in the city of Jericho. It says there he was the chief tax collector. Tax collectors are never popular, but in Romans' days, it was even worse. The Roman system of collecting taxes was absolutely corrupt. In the first place, to become a tax collector, you had to bribe an official for the privilege of becoming a tax collector. Second, you could collect and keep as much taxes as you wanted to keep as long as you paid Rome its due. For instance, maybe a family owed Rome one dollar and you could say, you owe Rome ten dollars. They would pay you. You give Rome one, and you pocketed the nine. So it was a very corrupt system. So instead of being a tax collector, it was more like being a member of the mob. You could go in and say to anybody, you owe this, this much to the government. And they couldn't fight it. And you could collect as much as you want, skim off the top, and just give a little to Rome. So Zacchaeus became a wealthy man by ripping other people off. For a Jewish person to become a Roman tax collector was absolutely unthinkable. This was high treason. You'd become a, an instant social outcast. On top of everything else, the Bible says Zacchaeus was short in stature. Maybe he was trying to compensate by acquiring wealth. So, so he was hated by everybody because not only was he a tax collector, but he was the chief tax collector, which means this was the guy on top which runs the whole scam. What we have here is a guy who has a lot of money but doesn't like himself. He was a man who was probably lonely and miserable. Yet one day, everything changed in one little moment, one encounter with Jesus that we're going to look at this morning... He was never the same again. Why? He responded to God's call in his life. He was short. He couldn't see over the crowd, so instead of giving up, he ran ahead, found a sycamore tree, and climbed it. He knew the Lord was coming his way. He knew how to get away with God. Now, now, the word discipleship is a word used in various ways in the life of the church. Here, discipleship is the process by which Christ followers grow in the Lord Jesus Christ. By becoming, it's the process by which they become more like Jesus. By participating in such disciplines as prayer, Bible study, Holy Communion, worship, and service, they are equipped by the Holy Spirit to overcome the pressures and trials of this present life and become more like Christ. In order to do that, though, we're going to have to climb some sycamore trees. We're going to have to keep our balance and stand on that bicycle and keep pedaling uphill. Two lessons from a sycamore tree. Number one, no matter what, Jesus notices. No matter what, Jesus notices. No matter how low, how lonely, how insignificant, how little I feel, maybe if nobody else notices me, Jesus Christ notices me. As I said, Zacchaeus was a very wealthy man, but he was also a very lonely man. When he heard that Jesus had come to the city of Jericho, he wanted to get a glimpse, but he was so short he couldn't see above the crowd. So Zacchaeus did two things that no wealthy Middle Eastern man would do. One, he ran through the crowd. And two, he climbed a tree. These were things that little boys do in crowds, not wealthy, well-known men. But he wanted to get ahead of the crowd, and he found a tree where he hoped that Jesus would pass by, and he climbed up that tree. That was shocking, but what Jesus did was even more shocking. Jesus walked straight through the city, past hundreds, possibly thousands of people thronged in that crowd, and he walks right up to that tree, and he stops. Notice what happens. Luke 19, verse 5, Jesus says, When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up. In a packed-out crowd, 
He notices Zacchaeus. He looks up. I can imagine Zacchaeus' heart starting to pound, literally about to explode. His throat all constricted. His blood is pulsing. He's filled with adrenaline. He's looking at me. Out of all the people in Jericho, he's looking at me. Why did he stop here? Why did he look up? Here is the Son of God looking directly at me. I imagine he was in shock when that happened. Well, why did Jesus do that? Why did Jesus stop right at that tree and look up? Because he knew ex that was exactly where Zacchaeus was. Here's the point. God knows exactly where you are today. You may even be up a tree. You may be out on a limb. You may be in a hole. You may think God has forgotten you and is a thousand miles away. That's not true. There's never been a, a moment when God looked away from you. God's eyes have always been focused on you. God has seen every breath you've ever taken, every thought you ever had, every word you've ever said, everything you've ever done, good or bad, and God has constantly looked at you with eyes of love. So when you pray to God, it's not like you are praying to a stranger. When you open the Bible, it's not like you are all alone. When you worship, when you serve others, when your heart breaks at communion, God is always present with you always we have a hard time imagining that God pays that much attention to us because we don't pay that much attention to God we don't notice God 24 hours a day but every moment of every day God is always seeing you God notices every detail people may ignore you people may not notice you you may feel like a wallflower. You may feel that other people think your life doesn't matter. God never ignores you. Jesus said this in Luke 12, verses 6 to 7. He says, Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. You know, the hairs on your head part, for some of us, that's not too difficult to count, I guess. The deepest expression of love is attention. When you give somebody your attention, you're giving them your love. When you don't pay attention to your husband or wife or kids, you are being unloving. Love is giving attention. And because God loves you with the, with the love you've never imagined, God has always paid attention to you. God's watchful, loving eyes are always on you. Number two, no matter what, Jesus wants me. This is the biggest mind blower of all. No matter what I've done, God would want me and would want a relationship with me. Zacchaeus' appearance made him feel lonely and insecure, and Zacchaeus' accusers made him feel bitter and resentful, but it was Zacchaeus' sins, his own lifestyle, his own choices that made him feel guilty and ashamed. So Jesus Christ did something even more shocking. He didn't just walk up to the tree and look up and notice him. And he didn't just call him by name and affirm him, a pure one, in front of everybody else who hated him. But Jesus invited himself to Zacchaeus' home for dinner. This is amazing. He said to Zacchaeus, come down quickly for I'm going to be a guest at your home today. This is unthinkable. That Jesus Christ, the Son of God, would walk all the way through town to find the biggest scoundrel in town and say, I'm going to go to your house. I'm going to be your guest. Out of all these people, I choose you. The reaction of the crowd was swift and brutal. All the people saw this and they began to complain. Jesus 
is staying with the sinner. I can hear them saying the word sinner with deep, dripping disdain. And all the righteous indignation comes out. This Weasley guy, he's going to stay at his house. Jesus Christ knew that Zacchaeus was carrying so much hidden guilt, like many of you are, that there's no way that Zacchaeus would presume to invite Jesus to, him, to his house because in his mind he'd be thinking, I'm not good enough to have Christ at my house. I'm not good enough to have God as my guest. You don't know the things I've done. I'm not good enough to have a relationship with him. And many of you have felt that way and you think, I'm not good enough, but you're wrong. You're dead wrong. It's not based on your goodness. It's based on God's incredible love for you. And by the fact of all you've done, God still wants you. God wants you to connect. That is what discipleship is all about. Prayer reading the Bible, serving others, Holy Communion. These are all ways to deepen our relationship with God. These are the ways for us to connect to God. Knowing this, knowing that God notices everything in your life, that God cares about you, that God's eyes of love are constantly watching you, God affirms you regardless of what anybody else says. How should, you, how should you respond to God? How should you respond to Jesus the way Zacchaeus did? The Bible says this, so he hurried down, so he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. I, I love the message paraphrase. It says, He scrambled down out of the tree. I think Zacchaeus accepted Christ before he hit the ground. He thought, this is a deal. I'm not going to get anywhere else. Where am I going to get a better deal than this? I'm going to take advantage of it right now. I'm not going to delay. I'm not going to wait. I'm going to take advantage of it. And what was the result? Let's read it together from the New Century Version. It's on the back of your outlines. Do you see it there? Let's just read it, Luke 19, verses 8 to 9. Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times that amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house. When I was a kid riding my bike up that hill in Waveland, no matter if the chain broke or I pushed my back bike the rest of the way because I couldn't finish, even when I experienced the thrill of victory, all I had to do was turn right and my home was the first house on the left. I knew I had a place where I was loved and accepted Thank you, William G. and Marguerite Lewis, for loving your son. But you know, they are not around anymore. I have a far better place to come home to. With every prayer, every Bible study, every act of service in Jesus' name, every time of worship, every Bible study, every time I receive communion, I experience God's grace, and love. Do you? Maybe you need to do what Zacchaeus did. Hurry down to Christ and receive his love. How do you know if you've really met Jesus Christ? Your attitudes change. You become a more generous person. All of a sudden, you're not so stingy, so selfish anymore. You start thinking about other people. Why? Because you realize how much you've been given and you want to give back. And you relish your time with the, with the Lord. Pray with me. Would you pray this prayer in your heart? Dear God, thank you for noticing every detail of my life. 
I can't imagine that kind of love. That you've always been watching every second of my life with love. Thank you for seeing my potential in spite of my sin. Thank you for wanting me in spite of all that I've done. Today I surrender to your love. I invite you into my life and into my mind. Please make changes in me that turn me from a taker into a giver and into all the things that you want me to be and that I've always wanted to be myself. Thank you for not being ashamed of me. I don't want to be ashamed of you. Friends, if you pray that prayer, I believe in all my heart that Jesus heard your prayer and knows your needs. Come to him this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.